Hello everybody. If you remember in the uh, last phase of the previous video lecture, uh, I talked about uh, control kinetic form uh, in state space adaptation. Now I will talk about the dual form, which is called observable kinetic form. Okay. So given a, a transfer function, uh, transfer function, uh, we have different kind of realization, and one of the uh, kinetic realization that we covered in the block diagram realization is this. Okay. So I call it observable canonical realization because once uh, we write a state representation, it will be in observable canonical form. Let's do it uh, all together and try to better understand how we can do that. Okay, so we have three uh, state variables, x1, x2, and x3. It's a third order system, and we should have three states for a minimal representation. Okay, so x1 of z, okay, which is here, is equal to z to the power minus 1 times, okay, that's good. So b3 times u of z minus a3 times y of z, right? But I don't want to use y of z because y of z is r up. Instead, I should use either the input or the states. So y of z, as you can see, is equal to u of z times b0. Okay, that's great. Plus x3 of z. Okay, so if I organize it here, this is y of z, of course, x1 of z is equal to z to the power minus 1. Okay, that's great. This is y of z. Uh, minus a3 times, this is x3, x3 of z plus u of z b3 minus a3 times b0. Okay, good. So what we can do is we can convert it into difference equation form, which we can use for the state space presentation, which is equal to x1, k plus 1 is equal to, okay, so minus a3, x3 of k plus b3 minus a3, b0, u of k, that's great, okay, we computed our first equation. Okay, good. So we computed x1, so what we should do is, uh, we should do the same thing for x2 and x3 and finalize our equations. Okay, good. So let's keep it here and uh, move to the claim page uh, to better understand uh, the results, and we will need that, so let's write it. y of z is equal to so y of z is equal to, okay, b0 times u of z plus x3 of z. Okay, that's good. So let's uh, start with x2. Okay, so we will concentrate on this part. Okay, that's good. So what is x2 of z is equal to z to the power of minus 1 summation of signals. Let's start from here. Okay, so b2, b2, u, z. Okay, so it's not 2, let's clean it. Let's make it real 2. b2, u of z plus x1 of z. That's great. Okay, that's simple. Minus a2, y of z. What is y of z? Okay, it is equal to a2, b0, u of z minus a2 x3 of z. Okay, that's good. So it's kind of very simple. So if we write the difference location, x2 k plus 1 is equal to, okay, x1 of k, which is easy, minus a2, okay, so let's change it, okay, a2 x3 of k, plus u of k, this is u, times b2 minus b0 times a2. Okay, so now we completed our second equation. To complete the state evolution equation, we need to find one more equation, which depends on x3. Okay, so we can do it here. We have enough space. So in x3, we will concentrate on this part. Okay, so let's do the same thing, and it will be very similar to x2, technically. x3 of z is equal to z to the power minus 1. Okay, so let's start with the same thing. So as you can see, b1, u of z, which is the signal, 
plus x2 of z, okay, minus a1, okay, and it will be y0, so it will be equal to b0 u of z, okay, so let's clean it to better write it, a1 times b0 u of z minus a1, okay, x3 of z. That's great. So x3 k plus 1 is equal to, from this perspective, x2 of k, okay, that's great, minus a1, x3 of k, that's great, plus, okay, what's that? b1 minus a1, b0, u of k. As you can see, it is very similar to x2 of k, which should be the case, and we will see the pattern soon once we uh, write all of the state space representation. Okay, good. So let's clean other parts to refresh our mind uh, to finalize our state evolution equation. Okay, that's great. So, okay, that's good. So what we can do, let's try to better understand the results. Okay, good. So uh, our state evolution equation in this form, if you remember, x k plus 1, and x is composed of x1, x2, and x3 is equal to a matrix, right? x of k plus another matrix u of k. Okay, so we will need more space for this. Okay, so let's make it like this, u of k. That's good. Let's start with x3. So x3 doesn't depend on uh, x3, k plus 1 doesn't depend on x1. So this is 0. Okay, so it depends on x2, and this is equal to 1. And it depends on itself, and it is equal to minus a1. And it depends on the input, which is equal to b1 minus a1, b0. Okay, that's great. So let's look at x21, uh, x2k plus 1. It depends on x1. It doesn't depend on itself. It is equal to 0. This is minus a2. So it is equal to b2 minus b0, a2. Okay, so let's look at the previous equation. So x1 doesn't depend on either uh, x1 and x2, but it depends on x3, which is a minus a3. Okay, so 0, 0, minus a3, and if we can see that the input uh, coefficient is equal to b3 minus a3 minus b0, okay, so b3 minus b0, a3. Okay, so this is the structure, and as you can see, there is a pattern here. Okay, so the first row, okay, so first row and first two elements, we have a 0, row vector 0 0 and right behind it in the like first two columns we have an identity matrix here okay and at the like last column as you can see we have the coefficients of the mm, denominators a1 a2 and a3 okay and input is composed of both b's and a's but if we have b0 is equal to 0 then it will be only composed of b's b1 b2 and b3 so the good thing is, as you can see, in, and it will be true for all of the representations, your system matrix will only depend on the denominators. Numerators doesn't affect your system matrix because they are technically the poles, the main characteristics. They are not affected by the numerator dynamics. But of course, numerator dynamics can change your input and output equations, so P's or G's. Okay, good. So what we need to finalize it to have a complete uh, structure Compute the output equation. Output equation uh, for observed kernel form is very easy because we already computed that y of k is equal to what? b0 uk and x3 of k. So I can write it like this 0, 0, 1 x of k plus b0 times u of k. Okay, so if I look at the final structure, it is like this. Okay, this is the observable kernel form. Okay, as you can see, I already explained the details. So uh, if you carefully analyze this form with this form, okay, so it should be here, okay, so they are very similar. 
the same thing the, uh, idea is. So let's say that this is GC and this is BC and this is like CC, like G matrix, B matrix, and C matrix, and this is the DC of the uh, control current representations. You can see that here. Okay, this is equal to like G O observed current form system matrix equal to G C transpose and it should be the case. So it's the transpose. Okay, this is equal to B or let's say instead use H. Okay, so H O is equal to the transpose of C C. Okay, if you remember. Uh, in the control canal form, our B matrix is very simple, like 0, 0, 0, 1, but we have like uh, similar coefficients in the output equation, but it is somewhere, uh, something here. And this is equal to CO, which is equal to DC transpose. And as you can see, DC is equal to DO. Okay, so I will give you a hint. So uh, the representations, okay, uh, can change your system matrix input matrix and output matrix, there will be some similarities. For example, control and observed conical form has some similarities because transpose of a system matrix of the one form is the trans, uh, the system matrix of the form, and you can compute the C from the B of each other. But B0 or like D matrix does not depend on your the state definition because it's the direct connection between input and output, and it is same for all possible of representations. But of course, uh, as you may guess, there are infinitely many minimal representations for the same system. Uh, and it's obvious because we use different definitions of states. Even if they are minimal, they are correct. There can be, of course, uh, infinitely many different representations.